Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to It's Rainmaking Time. This is Kim Greenhouse. I'm very excited today. I've waited a year to bring our guest to the show. The subject of today's interview is a passionate subject of mine that has to do with bioidentical hormones. And what I want you to know is that the traditional medical establishment, the FDA, and other agencies have confused and misrepresented the benefits of bioidentical hormones. Women who were experimented on and given horse urine for years that developed many cancers in women. My mother took Premarin. Friends of mine took Premarin. And though the woman's body is very complex, and we acknowledge that there's something profound about Dr. Jonathan Wright's recommendation and philosophy to always copy nature. Dr. Jonathan Wright is the Tahoma Clinic's founder and medical director. He is the author and co-author of 16 books. And today we're going to be talking about Stay Young and Sexy with Bioidentical Hormone Replacement, The Science Explained, that Dr. Wright co-authored with Lane Leonard. It's revised, expanded, and updated. It's profound because practically everything we hear about bioidentical hormones and hormones in general is misunderstood and communicated in a confusing manner. It's very hard for even educated and sophisticated consumers who do their due diligence to figure out how to test themselves hormonally, what type of hormones they should be taking, the quantity, the timing. But the man who's here today has been practicing medicine for a long time and focuses on disease prevention and treatment by natural biochemical and bioenergetic means. He is wise and he is sought after as a lecturer and speaker all over the world. He's seen many, many thousands of patients into the 30,000 realm of patients and more. He has received the Linus Pauling Award from the Society of Orthomolecular Health Medicine. And it is a great pleasure and an honor to welcome Dr. Jonathan Wright to its rainmaking time. Good evening. Well, good evening, and uh, thank you very much for all of that. Let's begin with a critical frame of reference for the public who doesn't get that hormones and bioidentical hormones are molecularly different and universes apart in terms of what they do in the body. Talk a little bit about what that means. Well, if you mean what was called hormone replacement therapy, that then um, got into some trouble with the Women's Health Initiative, uh, was not at all hormone replacement therapy. Instead, it used two types of molecules, estrogens, and by the way, that was a plural word, but there were several estrogens, and then there was something called a progestogen. Now, progestogen is a made-up name, totally made up, for molecules that do not exist in nature. They simply don't. But they sort of act like the human hormone progesterone. So the question might come up, why not just use the human human hormone progesterone? And the answer is insofar as, let's call it conventional medicine goes, is it's not patentable. And what doctors were promoted is this stuff called a progesterone, progestogen, a molecule not found in nature. If it's not found in nature, that means that literally it doesn't originate on this planet. And of course, it makes absolutely no sense to be putting molecules into our bodies that have never been found on the planet before somebody created them in a test tube because our bodies have been running on different molecules for as long as we've had bodies. Now, that was the progestogen, a made-up name to try to fool us into thinking, well, it's just uh, progesterone anyway, let's use it. The other group were the estrogens. Now, those were natural estrogens, but they're natural to horses. Some of them are the same as human. A large proportion are them not the same as human. And the same question comes up, even though it's natural, if it never was found 
in human bodies before, and specifically molecules called equilins, which are obviously named after horses, even though they're estrogens, then what do we do and put them in human bodies? In fact, that's the question I got. You probably know that this uh, field of bioidentical hormones, at least uh, in our span of time on the planet, got started right at Tahoma Clinic when a woman came on in and asked me for replacement natural hormones, and I wrote her a prescription. Uh, halfway through writing the prescription, I get figured out she must be a school teacher because she could read upside down, and she read the prescription pad which said Premarin, and she says, hey, uh, that's horse estrogen. And I said, yes, uh, you asked about natural estrogen. And she said, but do I look like a horse? <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's what she said. <laughs> And, of course, guys know better than to answer that kind of a question, especially coming from a woman. So I avoided the question and went somewhere else. And she interrupted me and said, what I want are the same, very same exact hormones I had in me when I was 33. Thank you. And I had to explain that most of them aren't available. There was one specific estrogen, but not a complex of estrogens. They just weren't available in the pharmacies anywhere. So um, she acted like um, some guys' wives do. Um, in fact, many guys' wives. She says, oh, I'm sure you'll take care of that. Now, she didn't say you'll take care of that deer, but it sounded that way. She says, I'll be back in a couple of months. So, And we talked about a few more things. And she says, I'll be back in a couple of months, and let's see what you can get going. Well, with the help of a very, very good compounding pharmacist in Vancouver, British Columbia, his name is Ed Thorpe of Cripps, K-R-I-P-P-S Pharmacy, he was able to source all this material. I don't know why nobody thought of it before, but why in Canada? Because I literally couldn't find a compounding pharmacist in the United States. And this was how long ago, exactly? 1982 or three, I forget which. Wow, you were all so ahead of your time. My God. You know, if you're in medical practice, you do what you can to take care of your patients. That's why you went to medical school. At least, I thought that's why we went to medical school. So it was all her fault. She just told me she didn't look like a horse, and she wanted her own hormones if she could get them. So Ed found them, and that is the very first time that I can find that a complete comprehensive program of bioidentical hormones was put together, including the estrogens, the progesterone, a little bit of DHEA, a little bit of testosterone for ladies even, and if one needs it, some thyroid. And we started putting those complete programs together back then. Um, but you know what? It's not the first time this has been done on this planet. Did you know that bioidentical hormones were being done in China in the year 1150? And if you read that book... I did. I won't go into detail but they actually were being done better in China in 1150 than they're being done now today. I believe that. I really yeah. do. That's really wild. How did you find that out, <laughs> that factoid? There's a wonderful book out there called the Science and Technology in Ancient China by Joseph Needham. Sounds and, great. Uh, by the way, his wife, uh, Mrs. Wu, W-U, don't want to leave her out. And there are 35 <laughs> pages in there. Well, you can't do that, because after all, she spoke more Chinese than he did. <laughs> Um, there were 35 pages in there on a topic called proto-endocrinology, which I guess is just their name for early endocrinology before anybody ever heard of endocrinology, and how the um, basically with Dallas priests at the time managed to put together bioidentical hormone programs. But unless we have the time later on, I won't go into how they did it because that's not relevant here anymore. There's a lot of confusion Let's start with the most complex piece, which is the three main hormones. And I know there's more, but estrone, estradiol, and estriol. If you could distinguish them and then talk about how it started at a certain level where they were being dispensed at 80, 10, 10, and then how that changed. Well, those are what were called for a while in medical textbooks the, quote, classical estrogens, unquote, which does not mean that uh, they either play classical music or nobody had any other estrogens, all that means is that those are the first three that researchers concentrated on. That's all. Now, since that time, why it's been found by many researchers, actually starting back in the 60s and 70s, but it never got any publicity, that there are 
20 to 30 different estrogens in women's bodies. It's just one estrogen is turning into a different estrogen and turning into a different estrogen, and they all...